Hello, my name is Bob Newman. I'm the Chief Business Officer at Immunomic Therapeutics. Thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to present. I'm excited to be here to introduce Immunomic Therapeutics to those of you who don't know us and for a chance to update those of you who do on some exciting upcoming milestones. Of course, I will be making forward-looking statements, so here's our safe harbor statement. Immunomic Therapeutics is a Rockville, Maryland-based nucleic acid vaccine company, primarily focused on the immuno-oncology therapeutic vaccine space. We are exploiting our proprietary lamp-mediated platform to tackle a variety of diseases via multiple modalities. We believe ITI is one of the few companies that can state unequivocally that our platform elicits a complete immune response, including long-term memory. To a large extent, Immunomic Therapeutics has operated under the radar for the past few years. We started out in allergy and monetized that portfolio with a sale to Astellas in 2015 that certainly validates the power of the technology. That sale has been one of our primary sources of funds for the past six years. Our focus more recently, as I said earlier, has turned toward the immuno-oncology space. Exceptions to this are our Japanese red cedar allergy product and our somewhat nascent early antibody discovery effort. We have a strong and evolving intellectual property portfolio that protects our platform. We have a rapidly growing clinical stage pipeline and we have near-term opportunity for readout in what could be a transformative phase two clinical study in glioblastoma. Our people and our capabilities are second to none for a company our size, and we are excited about our various near-term catalysts. More detail now. So just what is LAMP? What does it do? And how does it enable us to stand out from the competition? The typical vaccine approach is defined by the generation of a cytotoxic T-cell response via MHC1 presentation. We all know this is good, but as the pandemic has taught us, the lack of long-term memory and limited immune response leaves us vulnerable. This is particularly true with cancer, where a more fully realized immune response is likely to be critical for success. Here's the magic in our approach. Lamp-mediated vaccination is fundamentally different from other approaches. Lysosomes are vesicles that receive antigens to be processed for MHC2 presentation. LAMP, or lysosomal associated membrane protein, refers to a class of proteins found in the lysosomal membrane. Our scientific founder, Dr. Tom August at Johns Hopkins University, discovered that by inserting the coding sequence to an antigenic target into the LAMP gene, one could effectively deliver the resulting protein sequence directly to the MHC2 complex in maturing lysosomes for presentation to CD4 positive T cells. This is the only mechanism known for delivering antigens directly to the MHC2 complex. Helper T cell activation is achieved while enhancing CD8 positive presentation. We believe our technology is unique in this regard and we have abundant evidence to support this mechanism of action. It is the MHC2 presentation via LAMP that results in a fully realized immune response and enables us to effectively target a variety of indications from allergy to infectious disease to cancer via a variety of modalities, from plasmid DNA vaccines for treating cancer to self-amplifying RNA for treating cancer, infectious disease, and allergy to, excuse me, to dendritic cell approaches for cell therapy. And we have ongoing development programs in each of these. This platform presents us with an opportunity to produce products in an almost industrial way by inserting the antigen of choice into the LAMP construct, and depending on the modality, including a variety of delivery systems. We are working with a variety of collaborators, both academic and corporate, to advance the platform. From a pipeline perspective, these are our most advanced product candidates. They range from a large phase two placebo-controlled study in glioblastoma utilizing a cell therapy approach that I will go into in some detail shortly, to an as yet to be described described program in the antibody discovery space and include what we believe could be a blockbuster in the Japanese red cedar allergy space. The white rows represent those products that are in or will be in the clinic by the end of 2022. Some more detail on our lead product, ITI-1000 and our phase two glioblastoma trial. 
GBM is one of the most challenging targets in the oncology space, and though it impacts a relatively small number of people, it's a disease in desperate need of new therapeutic approaches. There has been nothing new approved in almost 20 years. We hope to change that soon. We have compelling data from three phase one studies that we are cautiously optimistic we will replicate in a soon to complete large placebo controlled phase two study, and we believe we are on the cusp of something special. Note the 25 to 35% five year survival figure compared to historical controls of under 7%. Here are the survival curves from two of the three phase one trials completed by John Sampson's team at Duke. Overall survival in these two phase one studies showed a median of over 40 months versus historical controls of approximately 14 to 16 months. In the first example, we have a true placebo comparator in the control arm where subjects received unpulsed dendritic cells. This data has now been replicated in a third phase one study. I'm not sure how familiar some of you are with the nature of this particular disease, but these results are unprecedented. Here's a schematic of the ongoing phase two at PAC2 study being led by Dr. Dwayne Mitchell at University of Florida and Dr. Sampson at Duke University. This blinded placebo controlled study is being conducted in newly diagnosed GBM patients who have undergone a definitive surgical resection and that have successfully completed their first course of standard of care chemo radiation. As you can see, it's randomized two to one test article to placebo. The primary endpoint is overall survival with secondary endpoints of change in progression free survival and immunological responses. This trial is almost fully enrolled and at 150 patients represents one of the larger phase two experiences in the space. Of course, we recognize that given the dismal outcome of most every approach tested in this disease, prospective partners are going to adopt a wait and see approach. Well, that wait is almost over. We expect to have a definitive readout on the study by early Q2 of 2022, and there is some discussion of whether a result anywhere close to the data from the phase one experience wouldn't open the door for an accelerated approval, particularly given the need for new therapies to treat this disease. At the very least, we anticipate initiating phase three testing by the end of 2022, and we're in the midst of preparing for that study. We've also recently initiated an additional phase two study investigating investigating the utility of ITI-1000 in patients who are AFRIS following their initial chemo radiation treatment. Our market research supports a somewhat conservative estimate of peak sales in the $500 to $600 million range, and more importantly, could re represent a game changer in the treatment of this disease. Pending the signal we see from the phase two cell therapy program, we're getting ready to file an IND for ITI-1001 a plasmid DNA vaccine comprised of two DNA plasmids, one encoding immediate early protein 1 and PP65 antigens, and the second encoding the glycoprotein B antigen, such each as fusion proteins with LAMP. As you know, cell therapy is a very costly, albeit promising approach, and we know that there is a subset of patients who are not eligible for apheresis for treatment with ITI-1000. ITI-1001 is more scalable from a manufacturing perspective as well, and it adds the opportunity for utilization in other types of cancer that express CMV antigens. We expect to initiate phase one testing late in 2022. This study will be a phase one, two open label ascending dose study to evaluate safety, tolerability, immunogenicity, and preliminary efficacy in newly diagnosed GBM patients in a particularly difficult to treat subset. Now let me introduce our next clinical candidate. ITI-3000 is our second plasmid DNA vaccine. We filed an IND for ITI-3000 in late December, and our phase one trial will begin in the first half of 2022. ITI-3000 is for the treatment of Merkel cell carcinoma. Merkel cell carcinoma is a rare type of skin cancer that is very aggressive. And there are limited treatment options that offer both extended disease-free survival and low toxicity. The vast majority of these cases are associated with Merkel cell polyoma virus infection. ITI-3000 is a plasmid DNA vaccine that targets exactly that antigen. It has the added benefit that it appears to synergize with PD-1 blockade, so we believe there is a significant opportunity for us in this indication, both in the adjuvant setting and potentially in first recurrence in combination with a checkpoint inhibitor. As already mentioned, our IND was recently filed 
and we expect to initiate phase one testing in the next few months. Our fourth clinical candidate represents our only non-oncology program, but one that has enormous potential. A quick introduction to ITI 9001 for the treatment of Japanese red cedar allergy. Japanese red cedar allergy is an incredibly difficult problem in Japan, affecting up to a third of the population on an annual basis. ITI 9001 is a self-amplifying RNA vaccine targeting the Cry-J proteins 1 and 2 delivered in a nanoparticle lipid carrier. It inhibits IgE production by skewing the allergic reaction from a Th2 to a Th1 dominant response. We are currently in discussions with the Japanese PMDA and we anticipate initiating phase one testing in early to mid 2022. We have a significant body of preclinical data supporting the mechanism of action and we have a well-considered path to a near-term approval. Currently, there are no approved and effective immunotherapies on the market, and we believe we have a potential blockbuster on our hands. In a further display of the strength and diversity of our LAMP platform, we have initiated efforts in the antibody discovery space, and we're very excited about our near-term prospects. In spite of the incredible progress we as an industry have made against a number of diseases utilizing monoclonal antibody therapy, there remain numerous challenges, not the least of which is finding new targets. We have evidence to suggest that utilizing our proprietary LAMP-mediated genetic immunization, we can generate a vast number of novel epitopes. As already described, the power of LAMP is that it utilizes the MHC2 pathway, and it is agnostic to antigen. It enables the immune system to do what it does naturally. We anticipate taking our first product candidate into the clinic in late 2023. Let me turn quickly to the makeup of the company and finish with some details about upcoming milestones. We are approximately 40 people and growing fast. The senior management team has a long history of success in both private and public biopharma companies. The company is led by Dr. Bill Hurl, a scientific entrepreneur with a history of successful company building and a 100% record of positive shareholder return. I'm the newcomer on the team, but the, the rest have been together for at least the last five years. We have a very strong group of key scientific advisors that represent some of the best in the business, including Drew Pardall at Johns Hopkins, who is a co-inventor of the LAMP platform and one of the people responsible for the checkpoint inhibitor revolution. Our intellectual property portfolio is strong, extensive, and growing. We have a particular focus on evolving the LAMP technology to the point where we are now working on a fourth generation of the platform. And we have a number of very important milestones on the near-term horizon that speak to the value of the company. These are highlighted by our phase two GBM readout in early 2022 and include a number of key value driving events over the next three years. We anticipate having as many as five candidates in the clinic by the end of 2023 and we could be launching our GBM cell therapy as soon as 2024. In summary, we've built a product development engine that has the potential to deliver a variety of nucleic acid vaccine candidates focused on transforming the landscape in a number of difficult to treat indications that promise to not only deliver important breakthroughs for patients, but also to create significant shareholder value in the near term. With that, I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present, and I look forward to hearing from any among the audience that are interested in discussing investment opportunities or to discuss licensing opportunities for selected portfolio candidates.